Okay, so part two. And by now the principles should be pretty clear. The idea is to break down the building into sections. Sections of walls which are divided by vertical posts. Using a tongue and groove system. Now at this stage it can get pretty repetitive. So uh, I'm going to fast forward through a large portion of what's going on now. But in the last video I did say I would recap some of the points that I don't think I covered properly. So I'm going to try and do that and then we'll start skipping ahead. So I just put the first log on the second wall in. I actually just centered it on the on the 2x4 and temporarily just fixed it in place so it doesn't move around. Second log is cut to little over length, sent to the end on that groove. So the tongue and groove idea should be pretty clear by now. Once the logs are then lifted into place then because I'm using reused logs there's already that groove in the bottom of each log so it's fairly simple to just run a pencil along the bottom of the log and take a little bit of the extra wood off to get it to fit nicely. some rain yesterday. The sun's out now. I don't know if you can see the steam rising off of these logs. The ends of the logs or the tongues are easy to adjust. Just put it in place, make a few marks and then take off what you need to take off. It's worth saying at this point. I'm using these hewn logs, old once used logs with the flat sides, but this system works perfectly well with round logs, used round logs or fresh round logs. I've done all of them. The only difference of course would be you would cut the tongue into the end of the log, place it in and then as normal with a log scriber, draw the Draw the lines. I don't know what the English word is for the, for the for this piece, but anyway, you draw the lines as normal and, and and shape those logs as normal. And now that those two wall sections are ready, it's time to make us another post. of the post we mark out the recess for the 2x4 
and because we cut the sections of log longer than they needed to be for the wall section, it's now a simple task to just mark and then cut the length of the wall, remembering to include the length of the tongue for this end of the log. And then we can mark and cut the tongue for this end of the log wall. And then with the post ready and the tongue on the end of the wall ready, it's time to put the post in place. So that's the second post in place. So now I'm ready to start this next section of wall and what I usually do is at this point I just I just mark where that goes so that once this is all taken down taken to the build site and I'm rebuilding I can constantly check that everything's going where it's meant to go I'll show you how this married up to the post It's pretty, pretty neat. A little bit of a gap there, but not too bad at all. And there'll be insulation in, in here. So it's the 14th of April. I was hoping to be almost halfway through this project by now, but I woke up to this. So I think I'll take, take today and edit the video, the first, first part of the video, put that out. Temperatures plus one degrees, so this is probably not even going to melt away today. Hopefully it's going to be going away tomorrow. If not, I'm just going to have to start sweeping some snow to the side and getting the snow off at the tarp and working out here anyway. But looks like a video editing day. So now we know how to do the wall sections, we know all about the posts, so let's fast forward a bit.
Okay, so I've got a fair bit done now and decided to put in this window. Needs a good clean. But this is a good point to explain more of the benefits of this system. Now, if you know anything about normal log building, when you put in a window or a door, you need to leave a gap above it, which you then stuff with the insulation, but that allows the log on top of it to drop down onto it as the logs dry out and they shrink a bit. With this system, that's really not necessary at all. That whole wall section will drop. Each log, log will dry and shrink a little bit, and the whole wall, log, wall section will drop a bit, and the window will drop a bit, and the log on top of it will drop a bit. But that's not a problem. They just drop down, slide down in the, within the grooves. Now, you might say that there's gonna be a lot of weight on top of the window, but that's not true either. Now, I could have cut these these are like, like two by twos, which I've just screwed onto the side of the window. So that it basically continues the system on just like with the logs. I could have cut it perfectly to the length and then these would be supporting some of the weight above the window as well as the window itself. In this case, this window is really sturdy stuff. And the only weight that's gonna be on it is this one, one log because the whole weight of the roof is going to be on the posts. So no need to think about that dropping gap. Same with doors. If there's a post on both sides of the door, door you don't need to put a gap above it. Just as an afterthought, I realised people might be wondering what, what happens as the whole wall section drops. Doesn't, isn't that going to leave a gap at the top? But no, it's not. It's fairly that's a fairly simple thing to remedy and you'll see how I do that when we get to the actual build phase on site So I've been, I've been kind of watching the level of the logs, trying to keep it fairly even. It doesn't need to be perfectly even with this system, but this log I'm going to use to level things up because we're getting a little bit low on that edge. The nice thing here is this edge is kept nice and steady here. All I have to do is put the block under this side. I've set the log scriber to this highest level. I've got my, my compasses set up, so now I can just easily draw this as normal. Okay, so I'm having to change things up a bit to shorten this wall. 
So the posts on the other side, they're 20 centimeters wide. I'm starting to use these logs, which are only 15 centimeters wide. This is the post which is going to be going in here. I've cut a groove five centimeters deep. Well, it's actually about six, as I said before. I like to do them a little bit too deep. And if I was to do a groove on the other side, then this log starts to get really quite weak. So what I've done is I've just screwed on a two by two. And on this wall, I'll be making the five centimeter groove here. Now, obviously I'm not going to be grooving the window, which is why you see that there is that gap in between the two by twos. The first two by two comes up to around about here. The groove will carry on all the way up and that's again, so that this wall can drop. If I do it all the way up to here, then the log would be able to drop, but the window would be resting on top of the, that two by two. So we leave a little bit of space for the window to drop. Now this two by two system works and is much, much easier, much, much less work than cutting the groove. I don't like it too much because it involves screws, which I kind of think is cheating. But you certainly could do a whole building just cutting a flat surface on a log, screwing on a two by two, and then all the wall sections which have a groove. One point, if you're doing that, is avoid, or if you're using the same kind of system I am, then avoid putting screws too high up. Because once this building's all put together on site, I'll be taking a chainsaw and cutting all the way down the roof line. I don't want any screws up there. So I think I'm not now going to cut this, this groove because the window's in the way. But I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be taking all this down. So well, I'll, I'll cut this groove down to about here and I'll remove this section. I'll fi finish off that groove when it's not sitting on top of the window. Then I'll be taking the window off and then I'll cut that groove here. So I'm not going to be installing this, this, this log here. It'll be installed on site. So at this point, I started breaking the building down and transporting all the parts to the actual build site. For the record, I earlier said that the system was fast, so I've been counting hours. And at the point that I started breaking the building down, it hit exactly 40 hours. Now, if you're building this building at the place where it's going to stand, then it would be a little bit more than that because you'd be putting in insulation as you go and um, drilling and pegging, as you'll see in the next video, because I'm going to have to stop here. We're at 20 minutes. Next video, we'll be on site and it's going to be starting there with the excavator because we're actually going to build this cabin half underground so if you want to see that then i'll try and get the next video out soon thanks for watching bye bye